Did you know? Many GameCube games have differences between regions, often to censor violence, religious references, and anything perceived as unsavory. These changes even affected the system's best-selling game, Super Smash Bros. Melee. In the German version of Melee, and every subsequent Super Smash Bros. game, Popo's name was changed to Pepe. This is because the word Popo means butt in German. Another GameCube exclusive that was somewhat censored is Pokémon Colosseum. In the international version of the game, Rui, who accompanies the character, had her shirt and skirt lengthened. This was to cover her midriff and make her overall appearance more family-friendly. There were also many regional changes made to F-Zero GX. In the Japanese version of the game, if the player asks Roger Buster during the post-game interview what he'd do with one billion credits of prize money, he'll say that he'd get a nice cold beer. However, if you ask him the same question in the English version of the game, he'll simply say he'd get a nice cold drink. In the Japanese game, the player can also ask Digiboy, Do you believe in God? They respond by saying, Who believes in such delusions? This question was removed entirely in the Western release. Another religious reference was removed from the Western release. In the Japanese version, the player can tell Black Shadow, Your rivals are howling for revenge. And he'll respond by saying, I'll send you straight to hell. This question and response were both removed in the West. Another religious reference was removed from Pikmin 2. In the Japanese release of the game, the silencer item is worth 666 pokos. In all other releases, it's worth 670 pokos. Since the number 666 is associated with Satan in Christianity, its price was likely changed in the West to remove this connection. Yet another religious reference was removed from the Japanese version of Baten Kaito's Origins. In the Japanese game, there's a scene where the character Sagi is tied to a cross. In the English release, however, the cross was changed to a slab. This was most likely to remove any religious symbolism or references to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Several GameCube games have also been censored to reduce violence and gore. In the North American release of Resident Evil 4, decapitations could occur through various means, such as the player being attacked by the chainsaw-wielding Ganado. Heads of certain enemies could also explode if they took damage from a powerful firearm such as the shotgun or sniper rifle. However, in the Japanese version of the game, any instances of decapitation were removed. This wasn't the only Resident Evil game to be censored in this way. In early Japanese trailers for the GameCube's Resident Evil remake, hunters can be seen slashing off the player's head, just like in the original PlayStation Resident Evil. However, the hunters' attacks were altered in the final game so that no decapitation took place. Kenneth's death was also changed so his head was still attached to his body when the player finds his body. These changes were likely made due to Japan's Sero Ratings Board and their strict views on decapitation in games. Interestingly, however, these changes were carried over to all regional variations of the game. The Japan-exclusive book, GameCube Biohazard Official Navigation Book, describes another way the Resident Evil remake was changed. Apparently, the staircase camera angles had to be altered due to one of Jill's outfits. Jill's unlockable Resident Evil 3 Nemesis clothes feature a very short skirt, so short that her underwear would have been on show if the PS1 staircase camera angles remain. The color of her underwear was also changed to black. This was so her panties were harder to see in reflections, such as at the water fountain. The GameCube exclusive Chibi Robo has many regional differences. In the Japanese version, the Free Ranger's weapons look fairly realistic considering the game's art style. Their design was altered in the English version, where they were given noses and their guns were changed to look more toy-like. The GameCube had some interesting hardware for the time, such as its broadband adapter, which allowed for online play. Simply having online wasn't good enough for some developers, however. Battlefield 1942, the first entry in DICE's online-centric Battlefield series, was originally pitched as a GameCube exclusive. This plan fell through when DICE became unsatisfied with Nintendo's lack of a robust strategy for online gaming. Several more games were planned to have online functionality. F-Zero GX and Mario Power Tennis were both planned to feature LAN multiplayer, but this was dropped for both titles. In May 2001, Namco announced they were making six games with online play for the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube, but these games never materialized. Only a handful of games actually took advantage of the GameCube's networking features. Kirby Air Ride, 1080 Avalanche, and Mario Kart Double Dash all featured LAN multiplayer that let players race against each other using multiple GameCubes and TVs. 
Double Dash in particular allowed multiplayer for 16 players across 8 systems and 8 TVs. There were only 3 games released internationally that had true online multiplayer. Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2, Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2 Plus, and Fantasy Star Online Episode 3, Card Revolution. Two Japan-only games also used online. The first, GKyo Powerful Pro Yaku 10, was a baseball game with downloadable content. The other game, Homeland, was a unique RPG that let players host their own game servers for 35 other players. While the guests would cooperate to complete quests, the host would play the role of God by spawning items and monsters on the server. By default, the GameCube used traditional composite cables for audio and video output to the TV, but it also came with a digital video port. By using component cables, the system could output higher quality video than with standard cables. The component cables were only available through Nintendo's official store, and were made in small amounts. This was because the GameCube itself didn't contain the necessary hardware to convert the digital digital signal to the analog signal used for the component cables. This meant the hardware had to be built into the cable itself, making them expensive to produce. The digital output port was only built into early GameCube models. Systems produced after May 2004 with the DOL 101 serial number ditched the digital port. This was because Nintendo's own research found that less than 1% of GameCube owners were using it. In the years following their discontinuation, demand for the component cable surged among players who wanted the best video quality possible. Because of their extremely limited supply, prices for the cables skyrocketed on the second-hand market, going for as much as $250, more than the price of the GameCube itself when it launched. Over the course of its life, more than a dozen different colors and variants of the GameCube were released. As well as the default indigo, black, and platinum silver colors, there was also a pearl white color exclusive to Europe and an orange spice GameCube exclusive to Japan. There was even a brown GameCube, though this model was only for game developers. The Starlight Gold Edition, sold exclusively at Toys R Us Japan, is one of the rarest models in existence. Other rare variants include 150 units of a special white GameCube released only in Japan, and a custom MTV Contest GameCube, which only five are known to exist. There was also a Symphonic Green GameCube bundled with Tales of Symphonia released in Japan and France. As part of the Char's customized box set, a red GameCube with a custom faceplate was bundled with a matching controller and Game Boy player, a special game demo disc, and a Gundam action figure. A Hanshin Tigers-themed GameCube was made available in 2003 to commemorate the Japan League Championship victory of the Hanshin Tigers baseball team, their first such win since 1985. There was also a GameCube with a Heineken faceplate, made as a prize for a contest where people bought 10,000 bottles of Heineken beer. A small number of GameCubes with custom faceplates were also given to employees of ATI Technologies to thank them for the work on the GameCube's GPU, codenamed Flipper. In later years, several GameCube games ended up becoming very valuable collector's items due to their rarity. Mint condition copies of Pokémon Box and NCAA College Basketball 2K3 can sell for up to $1,000 or more online. Gotcha Force, a creature-collecting shooter released by Capcom in 2003, originally launched to mediocre reviews and low sales. However, the title eventually gained a cult following and became highly sought after, often going for two to five hundred dollars on the second-hand market. Demand for the game was so high that Capcom actually issued a new printing of the game in Japan in 2012. One of the rarest pieces of GameCube software, albeit one of the most obscure, is the official GameCube service disc. Starting in the days of the original Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo operated a line of hardware repair centers known as Nintendo World Class Service, and the service disc was used by this repair team to test diagnose problems with GameCube hardware. After the service was shut down in 2003, all copies of the disc were recalled by Nintendo, making it an extremely rare find. In addition to its technical uses, the service disc contained quite a bit of strange hidden content. There are several songs in the disc's files that were presumably used for audio testing, including a rendition of the Lon Lon Ranch theme from the Ocarina of Time Rearranged album, a version of the Super Mario Bros. theme from the Super Mario World Jazz album, and a sped-up version of Sitting on the Dock of the Bay by Otis Redding. The Images folder contains a few odd graphics, like a color-inverted picture of Mario, the logo of company Art X, a subsidiary of ATI Technologies, and an image of the word dolphin surrounded by stars and a 
poorly drawn smiley face. Because there were plans to include 3D functionality in the GameCube before development costs made the feature impractical to implement, the service disc also contains images meant to test the system's 3D display. While most of the images were of generic in-game models, some of them were screenshots from the game Quake. The system had other unique additions. At Space World 2000, Nintendo announced a version of the GameCube's memory card that would house an SD card. This would potentially allow players to save game data to an SD card, dramatically expanding the amount of information that could be saved. However, this never came to fruition, at least not in its original form. The Japanese version of Animal Crossing released with a very similar device. This unique memory card used SD cards so that players could save screenshots from the game. The device is only compatible with Animal Crossing and Pokémon Channel. Did you also know that one Nintendo 64 game took almost 20 years to be published? Or that many N64 games were censored or changed for various reasons? For more facts, check out the Did You Know Gaming video on Nintendo 64 Secrets and Censorship.